Hello, everyone, and welcome. We'll give folks a few minutes to log on and join us. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Okay, estamos listos, vamos a empezar a Juarita. <laughs> Hola, bienvenidos. Hello and welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary's Stay at Home Speaker Series. Today's program is Veracruz River of Raptors 2021 Migration Highlights with the one, the only, Kashmir Wolf, Veracruz River of Raptors biologist. Welcome y bienvenidos a Kashmir. Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks, Jamie. Yes, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, my name is Jamie Dawson, and I'm the Director of Education at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. Thank you all so much for joining us today. As you may know, Hawk Mountain is the world's very first refuge for birds of prey, and we continue to work hard to be leaders in raptor conservation, science, and education locally and globally around the world. Hawk Mountain is a private nonprofit and membership is the lifeblood of our organization. To all of our members, thank you, thank you, muchas gracias for your continued support. We appreciate it so much. And if you're joining us today and you're not a member, we hope you consider becoming one in the future. Hawk Mountain hopes that everyone remains safe and healthy during these times of COVID challenges. And we are absolutely thrilled to be able to provide to our local and global community a variety of free virtual programming. As always, Hawk Mountain greatly appreciates and depends on donations. Just so everyone is aware, today's program is being recorded. The video will then be accessible on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel as a continued resource. We also have a link on our website that can directly connect you to our YouTube channel. At any point during today's program, viewers may submit their questions through the Q&A feature on the Zoom platform, and we've designated time at the end of the program to take some questions from the audience. And we are so excited that Kashmir Wolf is joining us today all the way from Mexico to share with us some of the 2021 migration highlights from Veracruz River of Raptors. And before we go further, I'd like to take a moment to share some of Kashmir's background experience with our audience. Kashmir is a biologist from Veracruz State University. He joined the River of Raptors in 2008. He has monitored birds in Mexico, Central America, and the United States, with the River of Raptors being his primary passionate job since 2008. In the fall of 2010, Kashmir joined the Hawk Mountain interns <laughs> where he increased his knowledge for raptor conservation. Currently, he is a certified guide for the National Association of Interpretation, leading the River of Raptors tours. He also coordinates the Vera Cruz River of Raptors and bird surveys of other Promnatura conservation projects. Kashmir, you are clearly so very passionate about birds. So what inspired you to pursue a career studying birds? Thanks, Jenny, for a really nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is, you have to go back to my childhood. And I was very, very lucky to grow up in a small town and in a very <clears throat> well forested area on a dry forest. and. For my luck, my, my father's land used, <clears throat> used to be really good for research and many biologists from the university or the Institute of Ecology went several times to my house and sometimes there were some, um, some school groups with the biology class and in those groups there were some people with binoculars looking for birds and I said like, oh, can I can I borrow those binos? And then I start like making my own uh, list of the birds uh, from my backyard and from my town, etc. And and that was I was 11 years old when when I would start getting more into birds. And 
I was the weirdo in my class in my little town, like chasing birds, watching birds, and listening. Like, hey, I know what is that. <laughs> so it was really passionate. And then later, I I learned about the river raptors, and fortunately, I was able to participate in that fall of 2008 as an assistant, and that was terrific. Yeah. <clears throat> so signs in. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I have to say, your face is glowing as you're talking about, you know, your childhood with these birds. Um, mm -hmm. So, ah, oh, wonderful. So, Kashmir, how did you first learn about Hawk Mountain Sanctuary? And then could you describe to our audience your ongoing relationship throughout your career with Hawk sure. Mountain? Yeah, with Hawk Mountain, like in when I was in the Real Raptors, uh, like working in, as assistant, everyone there were talking about Hawk Mountain and we used to see uh, Lurie Goodrich arriving in the September, October with the tours group. And then I started like, hey, what is Hawk Mountain? And learning, well, it's a century, one of the first in the, in the kind, like making, working with uh, raptor research and conservation and I was start like, oh, and how can you go? Or and oh yeah, there is some scholarship. So that's the way I learned from from the counters, and some of them previously have been in uh, in Hawk Mountain back in the early, well, late nineties, and then some other peoples later in the two thousands. So it is uh, very well known in the raptor, um, in the rap in the for the raptor people. And in 2009, I, I was able to talk with Lori Goodrich about the, the internship that Hawk Mountain was offering. So I did my application and, and I was accepted, which was really excited. And that <laughs> fall of 2010, I wasn't in the real raptors, but I was able to participate in Hawk Mountain. And since then, we have been in well in contact. Uh, more recently, coordinating the the tours, uh, primarily because that's one of the main sources for for making the project ongoing. And we have been participating in other uh, programs that has to be connecting the Central America and South America observatories. So that's basically our relationship. And it's going to be for many years, I hope. Yes, and many more years in the future. Many more years. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, Kashmir, what are some of your main responsibilities uh, with the uh, Vera Cruz River Raptors? Yeah, the, the main and the most important is the looking for the for the funds, the, the funds that we need for rolling, running the project. And then making sure that the monitors are doing consistently very well, like in shape. And like, for example, these, uh, these years that we have to make some decisions about opening or not opening one of the second sides. Of, but yeah, there is, uh, there is all these many challenges around. But yeah, my main responsibility is to make sure the real Raptors keeps going and that involves uh, looking the right people to participate and do the, the right counts and also making sure that the funds are, are possible. For right. The project. It comes down to economics a lot, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kashmir. We are very much looking forward to your presentation and hearing everything about your 2021 migration season. So I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just one second. I think we should be able to see it. Looks good. OK, first, first of all, last year in 2021 was our 30th anniversary. So since 1991, we start, well, I am part of Natura, so we start this uh, these observations of the sky and find out that the Veracruz raptors were in a very very important bottleneck, geographical bottleneck 
that concentrates raptors. And since then, many biologists, many volunteers, many people has been involved on, on this program and has been the longest program of Pro Natura. And it's, I think, if I'm not wrong, is the second or the third long-term um, monitoring program of the whole country. And well, and another important point is I want to thank so much all the donors that made possible this past season and also to our participants. As I mentioned, we rely on economics being uh, tours and donations, the, the, the most income that supports the program. Without that, we, it will be really tough to, to conduct the, the counts. And for the people that is new to Veracruz, I would like to sh show you a little map of the, the main migratory routes, routes that we have. And you can see at the top, Eastern Pennsylvania, there is Hawk Mountain. And if you keep going all the way along the Gulf Coast, you will see where Veracruz is. And, and just by watching that picture, our continent looks like a sand clock. And that narrow portion between Mexico and Panama makes a really nice uh, corridor for watching the migration because it gets concentrated. But something more particular about Veracruz is that why we have that so much concentration of raptors goes now for some uh, geological forms. And in this uh, screen, you will see how we have a mountain range just on one side of the arrows and in the other side, we have the Gulf of Mexico. This makes two barriers for these travelers and concentrate them all the way in one single road. And this is why where you see the Veracruz Road Raptors logo gets the bottleneck, which is pretty much the, the mountains touching the ocean. That's how narrow it is. And that, that's the reason why we have so much birds, um, mainly raptors that we can see during the fall migration. And lucky for us, this uh, past season was really successful. We were able to open the observatory. We got the crew, we opened just one station, the station in Chichicaxle, where we have our formal observatory. And this is the awesome crew that did all the observations and keep monitoring for three months straight, fighting against hurricanes and the extreme weather that Veracruz provides sometimes with really hot days and humid, and also some really nice fresh days in October and November. So the, we expend uh, more than a thousand hours of survey, was two, 12 people crew. We run two continent stations, the format that goes, the, that provides the data that I will be showing and we were able to, to do a partial count, more like exploration in one new site that I will show you some pictures. And in total, we count over 3 million individual, individuals and was 2.6 in Chichicaxle where the observatory is. And we almost got 400,000 in the new site called Miramar, which is uh, northern of Chichicaxle. And in total, we report 182 species during this past uh, season. And also we conduct 20 workshops of environmental education. And this was focused on uh, Jalapa in the capital of Veracruz, because that way we, it was an open park, a really nice park in downtown Jalapa, which allows visitors to, to not be so worried about uh, COVID basically. This one picture of the observatory. We got some visitors. We were open to public after one year close. And let's go to the, to the data. Here, uh, you will see two boards. The one from the left is basically the other migrants that we 
every year we monitor. Those are wood storks, American white pelicans, we have big sea cells, orioles, warblers, like yellow warbler, some scissor state flight catchers, ibises we monitor as well, and some red blue herons. And that's to give you an idea that Veracruz not, is not only raptors, we got a lot of other passerines and many other birds. And we try to we try to monitor pretty much all that we can. And many of the data, the rest of the data basically goes into eBird. So if you are interested, you can go and look for Chichicaxley uh, observatories and you will find the all the species list for each site. And for raptors, as you can see, we basically monitor the, the 95 around plus minus uh, per, uh, percentage of the, the migrants of North America. And broadwing hog, turkey vulture, Swainson's hog, Mississippi kite, that makes the 96% of all the raptors we count down here in Veracruz. Being broadwings, turkey vultures, the most dominant that sometimes, here's just one, one side. I'm showing the data for 2021. And you will see that it's almost a million, well, 900,000 broadwing hogs, almost 900,000 turkey vultures, almost 400,000 Swainson's hog, and almost 300,000 Mississippi kites. And that's, that's really, that's some of the highlights of um, the Veracruz migration, because we will have in one single fall, we can monitor the whole, almost the whole population of these four species in just by monitoring in Chichicaxle or with Cardell. But this year we only have Chichicaxle data. I'm, if you can see, I'm comparing here with the last um, in 2020 that we also opened just one site. And you, we can see some of the differences that we count less turkey vultures than in 2020, or we also count a little bit less Mississippi kites. But for example, uh, broadwing hogs, they're doing basically very well. And if we want to make a little notes about like what we got in that new site that we're we're now promoting basically. It's a nice place to, to see a lot of gray hawks and also to see a lot of peregrine falcons because it's very close to the to the Gulf of Mexico, to the to the ocean. And that's one of the good places to to look for falcons. You know, falcons are following many many passerines and also shorebirds to hunt off. So being close to the ocean is a really nice opportunity to, to spot these birds. Also watching for harriers, for example, northern harrier, etc. We got um, one golden eagle. That's really excited because we don't get many of those, as you can see. And every other year we got a bald eagle and we never have seen an adult bald eagle. All the, all the sightings we, we have had are juveniles. So, so you, you will imagine how happy the, the counters that they were watching that golden eagle. And another of the highlights, as I, were, I was mentioning, was making a disagreement with the Miramar Eco Park. This has been a really nice place to to see the migration from inside the uh, inside the bottleneck, basically, and this is the the view from there. It's completely different than the view from Chichicaxle, where we are surrounded by um, plantations, mostly of it is sugarcane plantations. And here we can see more of the sierra, which makes the bottleneck, and it's really really impressive. And this is some of the pictures that we are able now to see the, 
and these are just turkey vultures and and it's really it's really exciting how to see a turkey vulture from very close and in that many uh, proportions that you say whoa turkey vultures are awesome and yes indeed they make they make a really such a nice job in the environment this is another picture which i really like to see like the migration a lot of a lot of birds and with the ocean in the background the the area has a lot of culture so we're excited of having this new site as for the visitors of light and also we're going to start making environmental education in that side as in the in the possibilities that that we can have and talking about the environmental education as i was mentioning in the beginning being in this park has been really great the Maquiltepec park and there was not only focus for children as you can see there were families taking the the workshop attending and it was really it was really nice to have this type of approach that we used to do this type of um, workshops in the 1990s because in that very site we used to count during the spring migration and now uh, we want to to return and start collaborating with, with this uh, Maquiltepec Park in Jalapa City, which is the capital of Veracruz. And another thing that we accomplished was the bird festival or 10 bird festival, the El Festival de las Aves, and was online because of obvious reasons. Hopefully this year is gonna be a different and we hope to, to make it live. And another program was the participation of the Festival Nacional for el, para el Agua y los Bosques, is a water and forest festival, national forest, where we got a lot of um, more, more views. And in the observatory, was I was surprised actually for, for having this many. I didn't expect to have 300 visitors, which was really excited. Uh, last in 2020, we were closed completely, but this year we open and people start getting more um, more confident, confident on traveling. And the Veracruz River Raptors, for some people that know the, the, the observatory, is in an open open air, so there is no enclosure. So it was, was really nice to have the company of, of, of visitors. Here's some pictures. And how to donate or support this project? One of the way you can do is join the Hawk Mountain Real Raptors tour, contact Dr. Lori Goodrich at goodrich at hawkmountain.org. And you will be experiencing the real raptors here in Veracruz. And in the same time, you will be helping the, the continuity of the, of the project. And another way, you can use your PayPal and send to facturas at pronaturaveracruz.org. Or if you want to mail a check or do a wire transfer, you can write me directly and I will help you, help you through with your donation. So thank you so much. And I would like to, to read some, some questions if you have any, and I will be happy to answer it. Kashmir, thank you. That was fantastic. And it's hard to wrap my head around seeing that many birds. Um, amazing. I, wa I want to ask you how, when you see so many birds passing through at one time, what strategies do you use to be able to count them? Well, each site has three observers, two main counters and one assistant. The assistant is in the middle, is between the two counters. So counters divide the sky. So one counter is covering everything to the east and the other one is watching everything to the west. And the assistant is making sure they do not overlap lines. And there are some tricky times when like for example, turkey vultures and Mississippi kites, they are the rebels of the migration. They do whatever they want. Sometimes you will see 
a line that is flying straight from north to south in the east portion. And suddenly they decide to come back and take another thermal and they will be crossing to the west side. So the assistant has to be very, very clever watching those lines. So the counter has the, is, um, is aware like the assistant said, hey, there is a line that is going to be coming from the south because they're going to the thermal you are counting, for example. And then the counter has to speed up because you don't want another group getting into you the into your your main group that you were counting. So you have to pass that line and keep the range, like try to count every, everything that is in front and a little bit to the side. And that's the it's, it's tricky, but is everything works very well with right communication and the, the, the people watching carefully the, the sky and what the raptors do, because sometimes the sky can be a screen of birds, like completely, completely covered and that like you can cry of emotion. It's, it's incredible. And of course, you have to be really focused, like do not counting on sometimes counting without the binos. You have to do it naked eye and then making sure you are counting the right species. And of course we have the, these codes when it's so hard, when, when you will notice that there is a lot of mixture between the, the groups is when we enter just by unidentified raptors. That means it was a mixture with Swainson's broadwings and probably turkey vultures. It's turkey vultures are more easy to count, yeah. but it always depends on the situation and the wind, of course, makes a really place a lot with, with the lines. Wow, well, I say the counters have amazing skills, so I'm impressed. All yeah, right, they have, <laughs> they have to. Oh my goodness, impressive. All right, we have a bunch of questions coming in, Kashmir. All, All right. right. If migrating raptors do not use the Vera Cruz flyway, what other itineraries do they follow to head to South America? And are there similar survey efforts going on in those areas? Yeah, they can, they can go all the way through the Pacific slope. Mostly like some uh, Swainsons, for example, or Harris's hog that sometimes they move along the west of Mexico. And also we have other uh, lines that are jumping between Florida and the Yucatan Peninsula, like the swallowtail kites. But there, there is other other roads. And, and if we can make it more incredible, just think about the ruby-throated hummingbird that can cross the Gulf of Mexico yeah. in a straight flight. So, but yeah, if they're not taking the Veracruz, the, this, uh, main bottleneck, they can, they, they, they use even the Florida, Cuba, Yucatan Peninsula or the Bahamas or using the, um, the, the west of, of Mexico. And yeah, there is other efforts. There are uh, counting station in Belize. There are counting stations in Costa Rica, in Panama, and also in Colombia and in Venezuela that we know now. Wow, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, let's see, some more questions. Um, how far away is the new site? And the new site was Miramar, correct? Um, how far away is the new site from other sites? From the other sites is only 20 minutes drive. And it's, uh, it's very close to the, to the shore as, as you were able to see in the picture. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's very close. Nice. Like 40 kilometers, 30, 30 kilometers ish. Very nice. All right, more questions. When is the peak of the broad wing numbers? And are the peaks for Swainsons, Merlins, and turkey vultures different? Yeah, we have as many people uh, that has been going to Hog Mountain, we have these time uh, migration periods. And for example, the Mississippi kite is the first in do their migration with the swallowtail kites. So that takes place in August. 
And then in September, we have the peaks for the Bradwin hog, and that's later in September between the 27th to October the 2nd. And then the, the Swainson's hogs, they start picking the numbers in the first, late first week of October, like around the 7th. And then the peaks are around the 10 or the 15, more or less in that period of time. And later in the season, the rest, like pretty much the rest of October after the 20th, we got a lot of turkey vultures. And in October is most of the time for watching Coopers, sharp shins, uh, migrating, for example. Yeah. Thank you. I love how you have that all memorized in your head. You didn't have to reference <laughs> any notes. You just knew it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> okay. Yeah, then, oh, I, I want to add something else. Like mm -hmm. in late November, like there is a uh, very little data about the suntail hog and this uh, gray gray hogs migration. And for Greyhawk, we used to see them more in late November. And it's incredible. In this new site, we used to count like one after the other, like several Greyhawks. And it was, it's, really, it's really interesting. And we had to start deploying some tags um, to follow in their, their migration in, during this uh, 2022 fall. Thank you. Okay, we have some more questions coming your way. Are all the raptors migrating through or will some of them overwinter near Veracruz? Yeah, many, many just pass through, like most of it. But we have a few broadwing hogs that stay. We have a, many red tail hogs. And that probably happened also in the United States. There are several that, that decide to visit the, the bird feeders. And we have sharp shins, coopers that stay, harriers that decide to, to expand the winter here. Uh, some Mississippi kites, which has been rare, but there is not common. You will see probably one and or two in southern Veracruz or in Chiapas. But most of most of the raptors they, they America. Thank you. Kestrels, many kestrels we have also wintering. Oh, nice. So next question. Um, this is a huge number of raptors that you have in Veracruz. Do they diminish the population of warblers or other small prey? Because those birds got to eat at some point, right? When they're passing through. <laughs> yeah, something is really interesting how the migration works um, for raptors. And most of, like the most dominant species that I mentioned, the turkey vultures, Swainsons, Broadwin, and Mississippi kites, from those guys, only the Mississippi kites are the ones that are eating prey while they're migrating. And they're preying on dragonflies, basically. And it's interesting to see how they time their migration with the dragonfly migration. And that, that's that's incredible. It's, it's awesome to see them migrating and foraging in the mornings. They make these swarms or is yeah, it's, it's more it's like a swarms of uh, Mississippi kites eating swarms or dragonflies. It's awesome. Wow. <laughs> and the broadwing hogs and turkey vultures, swainsons, they do not hunt during migration or, ha or is very rare because we have trapped a few a couple of Swainsons every other year, and it's because they are they're they're going to hunt something, but this is not common. And the ones that tend to to be more active eating uh, birds, basically like passerines, are the sharpshins, the coopers, and the falcons. They they're fly they're migrating and eating because they do not depend on thermals to do their migration, so they have to flap and flapping takes energy and they need to, to replace that energy with some warbler friend, <laughs> unfortunately. Right, right. All right, thank you. So the next question is, what protections for raptors are in place in Mexico? So they're legally protected, pretty much 
most of the species are under the Mexican protection law for, 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 for fauna. And in Veracruz, Pronatura has done a big work uh, trying to protect areas and making partnership with landowners to protect big pieces of forest for mangroves, uh, dry forest, and also high like pine forest. So we are trying to aware people, not only about raptors, but also about nature, because we know that everything is connected. And if you remove something, some species from the wild, that is something that is going to happen. And that's something that we are, we are doing here in, in Veracruz. A lot of partnership, and that's very important to connect people. So important, so important. What would you say are the biggest threats currently? The biggest threat is the change of, of the land use. Mm. That's, that's the, the biggest threat. Wow. We, are, we are losing patches of, of primary forest. And I think that's something around the world. Yes, most definitely. Kashmir, can you speak a little bit about the history of, of Veracruz River of Raptors and kind of Hawk Mountain's involvement with with the site starting? Sure. Yeah, that was before the 1990s. And there were a few observations. And uh, Lori Goodrich went to, to Veracruz to do some explorations as well. And at some point, Dr. Ernesto Ruelas, which is the founder of Pro Natura and also the River Raptors, they start getting in talk with Hawk Mountain and we call Watch International. So they start working together to, to find out what, what was going on here in Veracruz because the, these guys from Mexico were reporting a massive flux of, of raptors. And because it's like, if you are in during the peak migration, you will see probably a hundred or 200,000 birds in any given day during the peak, peak days. So reporting that was very, very amazing. And that brings the attention of Hawk Mountain and Hawk Watch International. So they, they partner with Pronatura and then we, they start to making this, um, some surveys between the Gulf, like some towns in, in the, close to the shore and then all the way to Jalapa and other places inland to determine where was the best uh, area to, to observe the, the migration. And after a couple of years of research of making these surveys, they find out that Cardel and Chichicaxle were the key sites to, to observe this wide migration. And then basically in, in 1994, we start the, the formal three months count for the real raptors. Wonderful, thank you so much. The next question is a personal one for you, Kashmir. <laughs> what is your favorite raptor and why? That's, I, I, I know the answer. And that has to be with my childhood. I, there used to be a snack near my, my, my house and every afternoon there was a bad falcon. And so bad falcon is my favorite raptor. Nice. Yeah. And this, I, I like it because difference from the, from the peregrine that hunts with the speed, like taking the advantage of gravity, the bat falcon, they can pursue us and they're really good making, like chasing other birds and bats. And that, that was like, oh, this guy has really, <laughs> really attitude. And he's kind of acrobat <laughs> sometimes also, like makes really crazy movements in the air when he's hunting. So yeah, that's, that's my, my fav favorite raptor. Very cool. I'm now going to look up on Google video clips of a uh, bat falcon hunting now after. <laughs> yeah, it's program. really cool. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Well, Kashmir, thank you so much. That's all the questions I see for now. Um, I'll keep my eyes down, more come in. 
But what an amazing presentation. What an incredible place, Veracruz River of Raptors. And if you're watching and you're interested, you can experience this magic yourself. Imagine witnessing hundreds of thousands of birds passing over and you can experience this awesome ecotourism trip and knowing that you are helping to fund this very important uh, conservation research and education effort uh, that Kashmir and Vera Cruz River of Raptors is, invo is involved with. And as Kashmir mentioned, Hawk Mountain uh, collaborates uh, with uh, River of Raptors and, and we run these trips yearly uh, under the leadership of Dr. Lori Goodrich. So please check that out. It's so, so important. And I just wanted to also comment um, a little bit on what Kashmir had said earlier about partnerships and partnerships are so important. And we certainly feel that same way at Hawk Mountain. And, you know, Kashmir also mentioned when he was talking about his ongoing current relationship with Hawk Mountain professionally is that we are involved in this new initiative called Conserve the Corridor where we are working with organizations, educators, uh, counters, scientists, all throughout the Mesoamerican corridor. Um, you know, obviously Mexico, Belize, El Salvador, Panama, uh, Costa Rica, um, Colombia, Venezuela. Am I missing someone, Kashmir? I'm missing a country, but, and, and we're all working together to kind of share what we've learned to be more effective, um, share resources and see how we can all work together to protect these birds. Cause we all love these birds. And you know what, these birds, they don't care about borders. They they are traversing uh, the, the continents. And uh, so we have to work together to protect them. So everyone watching, thank you by watching this, you're a part of that important uh, initiative. So thank you so much. And if you want to follow this extraordinary epic journey these raptors are taking during migration, um, catch up what's happening a little bit further south um, on Thursday, this Thursday, the 27th, we are going to be meeting up with our colleague and also a former Hawk Mountain conservation science trainee, Esther Vallejo in Colombia. And um, the title of her program is, it's another stay at home speaker series, highlights of raptor migration in Colombia, findings and challenges. So you don't wanna miss that. Um, again, Kashmir, thank you so much. Oh, this is one more question coming in. Oh, they're saying thank you. <laughs> Uh, great presentation, a lot of compliments coming to you. Thank you so much to our audience for joining us today. Thank you for caring about raptors, spread the word. And we hope to see you at Hawk Mountain soon. And I always like to end the programs by promoting some upcoming events that we have at Hawk Mountain. Um, again, join us on this Thursday uh, with uh, to see what's happening with migration in Colombia. Um, we have our Winter Artisan Series, which is starting the first weekend in February. We collaborate with the Arts Barn every weekend from February all the way through the first weekend in April. We are having local Pennsylvania artists come into Hawk Mountain and teach crafts and really cool skills. And by participating in those programs, you are supporting raptor conservation. We have uh, the weekend of February 5th and 6th, our Scout BSA trail days on the mountain. So register your scout group before January 28th and save 50% on trail fees. On February 6th, we have Boilo, the coal miners cure. On February 12th, we have an owl prowl. On February 13th, we have a new program, Wild Love to celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, and then in February, we have a stay at home speaker series with Rebecca McCabe on snowy owls. And that's on February 17th. Um, and February 19th, we have Meet Our Farmland Raptors, which is a free program on site with some live raptor ambassadors. And then our second stay at home speaker series in February is also on Snowy Owls. It's February 24th. And that um, is with a visiting scientist. So we hope to see you at Hawk Mountain soon. Thank you so much and bye for now. Thank you everyone. Save the corridor. <laughs>